Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio. Today we're taking a look at desktop synthesizers, and I'm going to share with you three of the workflows that I use in my studio and in my productions. Each one has its own advantage over the other. Now, desktop synthesizers do have advantages over a synthesizer with a connected keyboard. And this includes a lower cost, a smaller footprint, especially for desks that have limited space, the ability to switch out one synthesizer for another or connect more than one synthesizer easily right in front of you. And also, there are some desktop synthesizers that only are available as desktop modules rather than full keyboards. In these examples, I will be showing the two synthesizers next to me that are joined together by wood sides, but are actually two separate synths. Before you get started, make sure you run the audio output from your desktop synth to an amplifier or DAW if you're recording. Let's start by taking a look at how to connect a desktop synth to a MIDI keyboard. For those of you that play piano or keyboard, you'll probably find this workflow to be the easiest and most natural. And for those of you that are looking to perform live or even live in a studio, you'll also find that this is an easy workflow. To start, you will need to connect a MIDI cable to the output of your keyboard. Your keyboard will require power to transmit MIDI, even though we are only taking the MIDI information and not the audio from the keyboard. Run your MIDI cable from the keyboard MIDI out to the desktop synthesizer's MIDI input. You will now be able to communicate with the desktop synth. If I want my keyboard to communicate with more than one synth, you will need to connect the MIDI through of the first synth to the MIDI in of the second synth. The bottom synth will now receive the same MIDI data as the top one. Let's turn down the volume on the top synth so we only hear the bottom one. Let's add another VCO. And even a third VCO. For a fat sound, use two synths together. The MIDI notes currently go from the keyboard to the first synth and then also through to the second synth. Some desktop synths allow you to patch certain parts of one synth out and into other modules. I'm taking the output of the top synthesizer and running it into the external input of the second synth so that I could use the filter of the Model D with the sound source of the Wasp. I'm turning off everything in the mixer section of the Model D except for the external input. So the Wasp is now going to the Model D filter. And of course you can send the Wasp into the Model D, but also have the Model D's VCOs as additional sources. So everything we hear is running through the Model D, but originating from the MIDI keyboard connection. Now let's take a look at how to connect an external hardware sequencer to our desktop synth. This has the unique advantage of being able to free up both hands so you can manipulate parameters on your synthesizers, but also be able to manipulate parameters directly on the sequencer on the fly. First, locate the MIDI output on your sequencer. Typically, an adapter will allow you to connect a MIDI cable to the input of your desktop synth. I'll hit play and my sequencer will now begin to run. Since my hands are now free, I can use them to manipulate the filter cutoff and resonance, adjust pulse width, mix my LFOs, or anything else on my synthesizer. Now 
Now let's play around with turning off some of our active steps of the sequencer. We can also adjust the duty control to shorten the note length. With a shorter note length, we can now add some slide between steps. We can select to quantize our sequencer steps to certain scales such as chromatic, versus minor, or major. We can also switch the range, which affects the octave range transmitted to our synthesizers. We can also repeat certain steps on the fly, which is great for a remix type effect. And of course, if you have more than one sequencer, you can connect them together to control more than one synthesizer. So with a hardware sequencer, we free up our hands and also have the tactile control of easily being able to manipulate our sequences on the fly. Last, let's see how we can use our DAW to set up and control our desktop synthesizers. The advantage here is we can easily control more than one synth at a time, and it's easy to create, save, and recall our different MIDI regions. To start, run a USB cable from your computer to each one of the synthesizers. You also need to switch the MIDI channel on the back of your synthesizer so that your computer is sending the proper MIDI information to the correct synth. Regardless of your DAW, the process is basically the same. Create a new MIDI track for your synth. Select the proper synth and make sure that the MIDI channel matches what you have selected on your hardware synth. In this case, my Model D is set to MIDI channel 1. Let's create a MIDI track for the Wasp and set the channel to channel 2. I'm going to add a few stock MIDI regions that we can now send to our synths. These will now transmit MIDI data back to our desktop synths. Last, if we are looking to record our performance, we need to record our individual audio tracks so that we can send each synth back into the DAW to be captured. Since the MIDI regions are handling the performance of notes for us, our hands are once again freed up to manipulate the synth's volumes, filters, or anything else we want to adjust. This gives a lot of the same freedom as an external sequencer, but is not as easy to manipulate the MIDI notes on the fly. However, when working in a DAW, we can easily create, save, and recall these MIDI regions. Thanks for watching. Do you have a desktop synth workflow that you love? If so, let us know in the comments below. And please like and subscribe to help support this channel.